Okay. Uh, uh, welcome to the Super Best Friends cast. No, they're dead. <laughs> you oh yeah. shit, you're you, right. You they can't died. I mock forgot. the dead. That's fucked no, up. Uh, welcome to the Whataburger cast. Pour one out for the boys. I'm your host, Watt. And I'm Ah. Uh, and I'm Berg. Anyways, welcome to the Roundabout cast. Oh, that's um, what we are, yeah. Today we're missing our special guest, Tyler. He's he's pretty busy. Uh, may or may not be busy next week, but we'll we'll kidnap him soon enough. We'll figure it out. Bring him yeah. back for his lovely opinions. Uh, I'm your host, Willer. I'm special boy Bradley. I'm I'm regular boy Joe. <laughs> that's cor- all. Of th- that's all correct. Okay. All right. Uh, as usual, I should remind people to uh, comment, like, subscribe. <laughs> but but no, really, uh, rate our shit if you're listening to this. Uh, you can give us like a three star. That's cool. Don't go lower though, because then my feelings will get hurt. If you um, don't rate us, I'm gonna know, and I'll I'll, I'll come get you. He will. Uh, review us on Yelp. Yeah, <laughs> on I don't Yelp. know. If, I don't know why we would be on Yelp, but. Uh, uh, Roundabout cast has great food. <laughs> we the grilled chicken was a bit dry. Mm. Um, we're also on iTunes and uh, Google Play and YouTube, where you can also find segmented videos of certain it's, topics. It's very convenient if you know we talk about a lot of things in a particular podcast, and um, if you're only there for one thing, that's okay. And uh, Willer has conveniently split it up for people who are there to listen to a particular topic please don't let my suffering go to waste thank you (laughs) um speaking of a lot of topics we actually have a lot of topics to talk about today they're all going to be mostly quickies no big hour and a half segments like last week's marvel bonanza yeah it's kind of the opposite of last week so going into that we're going to get into the first topic which is going to be i'm going to talk about game of thrones which I'm up the, to date, so I'm gonna big boy. navigate around spoilers. But then Joe's gonna talk about Game of Thrones. Yeah, I'm not. Well, be- <laughs> you kind of should, because I think Bradley will one day enjoy Game of Thrones. So I will one day well, join in the. Uh, I will. The crew. I will. I will. I will say things. That's about it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully they're cool. They're cool things. But tell us how this finale season is going, Willer. So, last time I talked about Game of Thrones was two episodes ago, um, which was episode two of the season. Episode three was the most hyped up episode of probably the series. Uh, that's not an understatement. Um, and a series with as much hype as Game of Thrones, it's like the most hyped TV series maybe ever. Yeah, it's, um, that's saying something. Right, so that means that episode had tremendous hype. Um, that episode, as I watched it, it was okay, and then I thought about it, and then I thought about it, and I hate that episode. <laughs> that, I've heard that sentiment thrown around. <laughs> it's a borderline series ruining in some cases. Jesus, the the, the battle episode. Yes. Okay. Weird, wow. right? Yeah. Right. Well, you'll you'll know more when you get there. Joe's currently in season five. Um. That being said, I'm not one to dismiss the entire series because of something like that, right? Yeah, like so, it's been a cultural phenomenon. So I mean, and there's like still, I'm, I'm sure everything else is still worth watching. It's still good. I, I know some people like this salted the earth for some people. I have friends. I've seen opinions online where they're like, I don't know about these last three episodes because that episode was so crushing to almost mm. everyone I know. Um, Damn. And uh, one day we'll talk more about it when we're all caught up. But I. Being the optimist, I liked episode one and two, um, so I went into four, like, okay, we're going to move on to something different now, but I think it's going to get more back to the better parts of Game of Thrones now, Yeah. Um, and I think it did. Um, I actually really like this episode. Um, there's some theories floating around because of it that have got me really hyped. Um, there was one really, really stupid scene where... It was pretty bad, and you know, people watch that scene and they get pissed off and they hate the whole episode now. I, that's kind of something that I feel like Bradley sometimes falls prey to, where something really yeah. dumb happens and like. Is this the Starbucks? No, <laughs> the Starbucks is fine. 
But there's two kinds of people. One, There's the kinds of people where, like, a really dumb thing happens and it kind of invalidates that whole episode or that, like, it kind of brings down that JoJo arc, which is where this came up um, before. It brings it down by a lot because of, like, one big crucial dumb thing. I think yeah. me, me and Joe are a little more optimistic where we're like, yeah, that was really dumb. But you know what? There was other good things in the episode. Yeah, sometimes I'll be like, man, that was a really good arc. But if this one thing was gone, I'd be like, man, that was amazing. Yeah. So I know what you're talking about. Never know what that will be. You yeah. never know. Bradley never know. is very unpredictable. Beast. Yeah. <laughs> we, we have like a whole thing where we're trying to dissect and understand Bradley. So th- this podcast is a helping piece to that they're building a database oh yeah <laughs> there's a certain database of yours our, our goal is just to learn. find something we can recommend to brad and be 100 percent certain he'd like so far it's been a 75 20 i, I had breaking bad breaking bad is that was, uh true. that was the most surefire thing in existence i didn't know how fast he would like it though because from episode one he already loved it oh dude so, like one minute in <laughs> we'll talk about breaking dad at a yeah, it actually was yeah game, game of thrones that's why we're here <laughs> um yeah. uh don't want to spend too much more time on it i really liked episode four um so there's dumb writing happening with some plot things but i'm the kind of person where I tend to lean characters over plot. Not that, like, if there's good characters and bad plot, doesn't necessarily I mean like the thing. If there's bad plot, if there's good plot and bad characters, it doesn't necessarily mean I'll dislike it. I just tend to lean character writing. Yeah. And I feel like all the characters are getting really good finales to their arcs this season. Uh, the writing for all of them is still consistent. Um, it's, like, it's the reason why I really like Lost as a series, which will kind of crucify my opinions to anyone. But Lost plot gets fucking nutty, which it, there's a certain enjoyment to that, actually. But the character writings and the plot twists that feed into the character development are really well written, and they're really real. So, yeah. Uh, I'm still looking forward to these last two episodes, and I like this most recent one. Next episode, I think, will be a battle that's even better well, I mean, isn't next episode essentially the episode nine of this season? Yeah, it's five. It's episode five out of six is next. Yeah, so this is this is the episode. It's essentially the, the Gen- climax episode. Generally, yeah. nine is the climax of every season. That's correct. Yeah. In season five, it was eight, but um, I'm generally speaking, I think I'm on six. Ooh, Joe, you got some good stuff coming. Um, yeah. Despite me not liking season five, it has one of the best episodes. So just real quick, let me semi spoil a thing. There was a yeah. s- the the bad scene that everyone hates involves um, one of the main characters being really dumb, and there's like director uh, interviews after the episodes, and they're like, "Yeah, she forgot that her main threat existed for a moment." Like, oh, God. <laughs> it's that like, like what. The, the writers, the director said this themselves. He's like, this character forgot the biggest threat that is going on in the plot to her at this moment. Like, say you're going into a battle. She forgot the most, the baddest, biggest unit. I forgot about the dragon in the sky. Like, no. There's something it's... happening in the moment where she No. Could... <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... Uh... <laughs> It's it was wild. It was uh yeah, I can see why people are kind of mad at Jesus, that. Jesus, it's raining hard outside. <laughs> yes, it is. Me and Bradley live in the same city, and uh, we're gonna get Noah's Ark in a second here. So we, gotta... <laughs> so we the... might get cut off in the goes. middle of this. If the power goes down, that might be real bad. <laughs> yeah. oh. Um. Okay, that's that's my Game of Thrones session. That was a uh, nice and quick. We're gonna yeah. move on to Joe. Joe, I want you to tell me yeah. your thoughts on seasons one through five and a half. Okay. Well, seasons four and a half. Um, well, whatever. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to preface this with I read the first two and a half books of A Song of Ice and Fire. Um, I really liked those books. Like, I I really liked uh, Game of Thrones, the book. Um, I really really like Clash of Clans, <laughs> Clash of Kings. Um. Uh, Clash of Kings is one of the best like fantasy fictions I've ever read. It's it's so good in a way that it presents the different, um, just the different like houses and how they interact with each other and the politics and it really, um, it there's a lot of nuance in the writing and the events that happen and, you, and there's a lot of foreshadowing in these books. 
Um, I've also I watched up to season four, second episode. Uh, <laughs> That's a good Game fucking Thrones episode. Before I, before I stopped, um, for a very variety of reasons. Uh, the main one being is that uh, we we just decided to disconnect HBO, and I was like, oh okay, I guess I won't finish Game of Thrones then or keep up with it. Rip. And we've gotten it back, so now I'm kind of watching everything again. Um, so let's let's see. Season one, I I really like season one. I didn't necessarily like the second go around, uh, mainly because I've already seen it, and I feel like a lot of that season hinges on you believing Ned Stark is the protagonist of the series. Yeah. Um, um, I actually liked so, season one better the second go around because I got to. There was a lot of characters, so I I got to. There are a lot of characters. Yeah, um, I got to see some stuff, and, uh, some foreshadowing, which was nice. But yeah, yeah. Uh, which is which is fine. I still like it. I still give it a five out of five. Uh, hey. Season two, I still really like season two, um, because I think it does a really good job of showing Tyrion and his relationship to his family. And kind of really buckling down on that and the politics that goes on within this uh, kingdom. Because you really didn't see that in season one, like hand to the king and stuff. Because mm-hmm. that it was too busy trying to figure out what the hell is going on with John Aaron. Yes. Big plots. Um, so season three rolls around. And season three has one of the most infamous like episodes and scenes of all of Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Maybe um, television, like it, it was. It maybe, got maybe people television. going. Uh, the problem being is that the people that are involved in the that scene, I really did not care about. Hmm. And I felt I felt that way the first go around. I felt that way when I was reading the books. I just that was a plot line. I really just didn't care for okay i could yeah i could see i I liked them a lot and a lot of the fan base did but i can see if you weren't if you didn't care about that plot line which was that plot line was the main part i would say of season three so oh no i agree and that's why i kind of like i I don't like season three as much is because it focuses Mm -hmm. on that plot line that's fair um the other one being is like i think uh daenerys targaryen is really good in season one she has a terrific arc um it's it's absolutely fantastic in the books uh but then season two and three, I'm just kind of like, I don't it's just because uh, see, especially season three, season three, it feels like yeah. she's just getting handed stuff, and you're just like, Whew. now the a part of that though is like, there there's a meta story I guess around Daenerys' story where she's kind of destined for greatness, you know, um, right? And, and I she that, believes but... it, and it, it's one of those things where it's like belief is leading to results as well. No, I and, and I get that. It's just like comparatively to like season one, where you have this girl that is literally sold off into essentially like like slavery and. Mm-hmm. And like abused and whatever, and has to grow to be this strong, independent woman. And you kind of, and then the next two seasons, you're kind of there. There almost feels like there isn't any showing of that. She's like, I have dragons, and <laughs> just burns down the place if she gets angry or yeah. burns that motherfucker to death. Yeah, um, Daenerys. Especially, I agree with you. Season three is the low point of Daenerys' storyline, I think, because. Yeah. You want her to not be in the location she's in for as long as she's there. Um, yeah, she, she, there's a lot of... And I, I remember that, I think, in the books as well, is that she is in that place for a long time. However, um, the the irony in that... Uh, um, so so in the in the show, um, there's Daenerys, there's the translator, and there's like the, the, the guy that's selling her the army or whatever. Yes. And so... In the show, you see the guy doesn't speak common and says everything to the translator, and he's usually saying something rude or crass and mm-hmm. whatever. He's speaking Valerian, right? Yeah, he's sp- speaking Valerian, and then the translator translates it to, to Daenerys, and it's just you know that common translator back and forth. Yes. Um. So what's great in the books is that each book takes the perspective of a character. So all of Daenerys' story is taking place from Daenerys' point of view, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, as soon as that section starts, you already are aware that 
Daenerys understands what this guy is saying. Mm -hmm. Um, and what makes it better is that you can see her thought process of trying to out with this dude. Like you, you, you get into her head of like what she's thinking and what she's planning and like how she's like positioning herself. You get to see her make the moves on the chessboard essentially. Yeah. Um, you, you really don't see that in the show because they just use that more of a plot twist in the way to develop Danny's ability to really kind of manipulate the scene. I really like that scene in the show. So. I mean, the scene is good in the show. It's just like it kind of goes like, oh, wow. When in the book, it's presented of like presented that, oh, she knows these languages. It's a little more methodical in the book. While in the show, yeah. it's a little more uh, shocking and uh, it's a grand surprising. Reveal. Yeah. Um, Differences of medium, I think. I, yeah, and I agree. And I think that's like a big part of uh, the reasons why I like the books more. And I would read the books. It's just. I can't get into something that I know isn't going to end. Oh no, it's never. It's uh yeah. Um and like with Wind of Winds of Winter like never coming out, I feel like it's not worth my time to actually read them because the story is just not going to end. Which is hard, which is terrible to say because I think they're really well read well written books. And I think there's a lot of stuff in there that's not in the, that's not in the shows that's really good. It's just I can't just get myself attached to something that I know I'm never going to be satisfied with its ending. Or lack of thereof. Mm -hmm. so, does George R. R. Martin still say that he's going to finish writing it? I he does. So. Is he still he's, pretending to write it? Oh. He's, he's writing short stories about Westeros. Oh, okay. So it's like, I don't oh know, boy, man. That's, he's doing um, the Mira thing with Berserk instead yeah. of finishing your story. Go do yeah. a side. Uh, no, at least the Berserk thing apparently was good, right? Uh yeah, and I actually just got the book in the mail. So hey. after I finished Pet Cemetery, I'm moving on to that. Nice. Uh, season four. I just watched season four the other night. Oh God. More like uh, season snore. No uh, man. No. Se season oh, four is I, some of the best television I've no, seen. Right. Through, through, through. Season so season three was really a low point, and then season four, I got to the point where I stopped, which is the second episode, and a very significant thing happens in that yes. second episode. Great, great um, things. Yeah, and so I was like, oh, okay. And then um, I watched them more. And I was like, okay, I, I enjoyed season four. Like, I, I, I liked it. Um, there There's some good character growth. Uh, da Daenerys is set up in a way that's a little bit more interesting than it was in the previous seasons, I feel like. She's also uh, leaving the location soon, right? Like, that, that really helped me get back into her storyline, I think. No, she she like gets to a place and basically starts ruling over it. Yeah, uh, okay. Still wasn't uh, super into that one. Um, it was better though because you got but, to see uh, some things that will come into fruition later. Yeah. Um, but this season four felt like a lot of setting up for da Daenerys and what she's doing, or what's gonna what she has to deal with later. Um, it's a great Tyrion season. I feel like in oh, his yeah. character. Man. Um. The courtroom scene in episode seven is some of the best acting I've ever seen. Yeah, that's I think it was great. seven. Man, shit gives me chills. Uh, the Viper was cool. <laughs> the Viper was cool. That that's a interesting fight. I don't. Yeah. I, I it's an interesting fight, but it, I didn't feel any tension into it. I felt shocked, but not tension, which was weird. I um, felt tension because I felt well, you know, I, I I could feel something happening there, but. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I, I get what you're saying. Uh, but um, but season five, it, it's kind of interesting because Tyrion has taken kind of the, the 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 background role in this season so far. He doesn't show up a lot, mm -hmm. uh, which is sad because he's one of my favorites. But I'm really liking Daenerys' storyline in this and what she has to deal with. I like, forget what's go. Is it the harpies? The son of the harpies? Yeah, the no, son of harpies. Okay, yeah, that was. No, oh, yeah, I think I like that one. And then, and then you have Cersei, who is just going fucking crazy. So uh, I really love Cersei's portion of that storyline. I, I do too. hate the Sparrow portion of that storyline. But the, but they're tied together. Well, I like what's going on with Cersei. I hate the plot elements of it. We'll, we'll put it that way. I. I, I don't though because I like that 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 Cersei is is now kind of I don't know lowering or raising herself above 
the culture of this place is that she's now putting herself above all of this cultural norms to get what she wants. Yes, um, but the the sparrows have such plot armor opiness, which is a problem. Some like some okay. characters in Game of Thrones, yeah, op. <laughs> hey. Uh, okay, so, okay, whatever. Go on. Well, don't interrupt me with your childish spats. No, um, you, you said that. I did. Um, <laughs> I just didn't mean it like that. Her, the OP <laughs> level of the of the current enemy of that arc um, is something that Game of Thrones struggles with. Where like Ramsay yeah. Bolton kind of has it. Another character later on, like everything just always goes right for them. Yeah, freaking Ramsay Bolton runs in is it this season or previous season i forget oh also theon's storyline i really got interested in after yes. season two yeah theon's uh, great yeah uh uh they do a good thing in that book that's a plot twist that actually yeah is great. I, i've heard about that that's really cool the reek plot yeah. twist um which i can understand why you couldn't do that because you can't just like <laughs> yeah <laughs> let me <laughs> Let us uh, blur this actor's face the whole season and then unblur. Yeah, um, there, there's something in literature you can do. Um, but anyways, kind of getting more to it. Uh, Arya's is another one that I feel like I'm just I want to see where it goes, but I'm I just feel like it's very boring. Hate, but hate I, there's Arya's a great line. Scene where she she enters a room. And there's a bunch of things in this room, and yes. I thought that was really cool and creepy. What a really cool what a set design for that room. Yeah, I, I thought that was really neat. Um, but I don't know like where it's going for her, so I want to see where that happens. Um, the Jamie storyline is really fun, I feel. Which one was that again? Uh, he goes to kidnap his dog. Yes. His dog yes. back. Oh, a lot of people hate that storyline because of Sand Snakes and how, how kind of bad they are. The who? The Sand Snakes. Oh, is that the the women warriors? Yeah, uh, I like them, but whatever. It's okay. very that that one that section stands out because it's very like it has a lot of brawn, so I like it. <laughs> yeah, it's a very high fantasy kind of actiony section of that show. I, it, maybe it, maybe that's why people don't like it. They I, don't I want. So. It's very adventurous. I feel like it's it's a very kind of adventure book kind of feel. Yeah, I like, rescue the princess. And I yeah, think I that think a lot of. Spin they wanted to put on it, but I can see why people didn't like it. I think a lot of Game of Thrones fans uh, reject that notion of they they don't want the show to be very fantasy. They wanted to subvert fantasy at every turn, um, Mm -hmm. which will lead to disappointment in uh, later seasons as plot lines reach their inevitable.